This is an overview of the pricing table widget by Unlimited Elements. Let's get started. Hi, and thanks for joining. It's Amit from Unlimited Elements, the widget library for Elementor. And today I'm going to talk to you about the pricing table widget. To activate the pricing table widget, the first thing you're going to need to do is download and install Unlimited Elements for Elementor inside of your WordPress website. You can do that by downloading it from wordpress.org or you can directly download, download it in the plugins pane inside of WordPress. Just click add new, search for Unlimited Elements, install and activate just like you do with any other plugin. The first step is navigating to the plugin, clicking on the category that we want to activate our widget in, hovering over the widget, and once you hover over the widget, you will see an install button. Click install to install it, and now it will show inside of your Elementor pane. I'm going to search for it in the Elementor pane, so in the Elementor widgets pane, it's called pricing table, and here it is, you can hover to see a screenshot of that and I'm going to drag that inside now this is the default this is how it looks by default and it has a lot of views you can change a lot of stuff over here and I'm going to take you over step by step to show you all the different bits and pieces that you can edit and customize to make it suitable for your website so of course the first part and the easiest part is changing the content you can change anything over here we have a title, a subtitle, which are these two, the icon, which is pretty nice. And we have an option to add a currency. You can also take the currency off if you want. Old price and the new price. You can decide also to turn off the old price if you don't have an old price. Duration, which uh, you can use this label actually to put anything that you want, for example. Right now it's written per month, but for example, you could add over here for one site only or for five sites. And we have an option to edit the button. So the button is over here, call to action button. And you can also add some button text. So that's about it for the settings over here. Let's jump into the layout section and see what we have here. So in the layout section, we have options to turn on or off different parts. We can also move the currency to be before or after the price, which is suitable for some countries. And we can also move different parts or different elements into different parts of the pricing table widget. Now what this means that we've separated it into three parts. The first part is called above header. The second part is called header. And the third part is called content, the content part, or under the header. So for example, I'm just gonna show a quick example of how I can move the icon inside of the header. So right now it's above the header. I'm gonna choose icon inside the header. And you can see how that jumps inside and how nice that is. Or for example, I can move it to be inside of the content and now it will be inside of the content part over here. So really, this is really, really customizable. And you can see you can also move the prices and the subtitle and the title. So you can move any one of these to any one of these places, which makes this really, really flexible. Let's jump into style and see what options we have inside of style. So the first thing is for content. So this is the content part. So we can add some padding. We can change the background color. We can play around with the border. Right now there's a default solid border with a border width of one. Let's just push that up. So you can see everything is changing live and looks nice. Border radius, if you want to make it more rounded, you can do that as well. And we can also change the content minimum height. Now this is really important when you have a couple of plans and in one plan you have only three items, for example, and in the second one you have five items so you're going to want to push the content minimum height and this way you can arrange all the pricing tables to be the same height. If you want the height 
to take into consideration only the content, you can just push this down to zero and that will work out for you. Let's jump into the above the header part. And above the header part, we can uh, actually add padding. We can change the direction, which is really, really nice. So we try to add uh, everywhere we could a option to change the direction because for example, if you're going to want the subtitle to be above the title, you can do that. So right now, I'm going to change it to column reverse. And you can see now that the subtitle is above the title. Let's jump into the header section. We can change the color of our header. Let's make our header a nice color. You can add some padding if you want to. That will make it a little bigger also. And we added a really awesome option over here which is to add a shape to our header. So that's really awesome. I'm sure you didn't see that before. And you can also do a left diagonal. Maybe later on we'll add some more shapes over here. If you have anything specific that you want to request, we can add it for you. And you can see again that you can reverse the direction. So for example, if you want the old price to be underneath, then you can do that. Now, this is really awesome because if I jump back into content and go inside of layout, now I'm going to put my icon inside of the header. So let's go icon inside of header. And now you can see the icon is under over here. So now if I jump back into style header and I'm going to reverse this, the icon is going to be on top. So really, really flexible. And that was one of the most important things that we had in mind when we were planning this. We want it to be flexible. Now, for example, if this diagonal line is too close to the price over here, you can just unlock the padding and add some more padding bottom, which looks really awesome. I jump into the icon and of course in the icon you can make it bigger, you can uh, make it less rounded if you want to, you can change the spacing. So Everything has spacing also as well. So you can also adjust using padding and also each item has a spacing. You can see, for example, for the icon, it was important for us to add a negative value so it can be pushed up outside of its parent item. That's about it over here. You can also add a shadow. You can play around with this later on. Let's change the price color to white so it's not gray on blue, which doesn't look too good. And let's title and subtitle, regular options, color, typography, and spacing. Let's jump into the list part. So the list part is this part over here. So we can actually align our list differently. So I'm going to align it to the start and you can see it aligns it differently. You can add padding. To each item gonna push the padding and let's see what else we have here we can change the color of our icons of course to support custom icons if you want to upload your own SVGs that's optional and another really really cool thing that we've added is called list alternating colors so this can add a different background to our list over here so for example Let's just add for the even items a different background color. And now you can see that the odd items have a white background and the even items have a subtle gray. Now, right now only one of them is even, but if I had more items, you could see that I'd get a really cool alternating effect. Button, you can adjust anything that you need over here. The radius, of course, you can also make your button full width if you want to all the colors padding spacing anything you need and you also have an option to customize the badge if you want to take the badge off overall you can just take off the text over here and the badge won't show i hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and i'll see you in the next video